Architecture terminology, secure defaults. Secure defaults, also known as restrictive defaults, refer to the concept of products or software being pre-configured with secure settings right from the start. This means customers don't need to make extensive configurations when they first use the product. It ensures that the product is resistant to breaches as soon as it's set up, and it should start up in a secure state. Even during unsuccessful startups, the product should maintain security or refrain from executing actions. Failure. Failure signifies an occurrence where an action or behavior of a system's component deviates from the expected or documented behavior. In other words, a failure happens when something within the system doesn't perform as intended or anticipated, potentially leading to unexpected consequences or outcomes. Fail securely refers to a principle that aims to ensure that when parts of a system fail, including functions, mechanisms, and recovery actions, the failure shouldn't lead to security policy violations. This principle extends to the recovery actions taken after a failure. These actions should not compromise security policies either. Essentially, even in the event of a failure, the system should not weaken its security posture or breach established security guidelines. This principle helps maintain security integrity in both normal and exceptional system states. Continuous protection. Continuous protection refers to a system's ability to identify and address failures or potential issues throughout various stages, startup, regular operation, shutdown, and maintenance. The system can adapt by reconfiguring itself, shutting down safely, or returning to a known secure state if a component fails. This ensures system resilience and minimizes the impact of failures on overall security. Keep it simple, reduced complexity. This principle advocates for simpler system designs as they tend to have fewer vulnerabilities. Simplicity makes it easier to verify that security policies are properly implemented and enhances confidence in identifying vulnerabilities, whether they truly exist, whether they are accurate, and whether they are fully addressed. Reduced complexity contributes to a more manageable and secure system overall. Zero trust is an architectural concept where trust is not assumed for any device or user. This means that authentication and authorization are required for every single action taken within a system. For example, users might need to authenticate each time they access different resources, like email, network folders, or mainframe systems. This approach enhances security by constantly verifying identities and access privileges, preventing potential unauthorized activities. Implementing zero trust requires thorough documentation and governance, particularly in areas like change management, security policies, and defining baselines. The principle underscores the importance of not assuming trust and reinforces the need for strict access controls and continuous authentication to minimize potential security vulnerabilities. Privacy by design is a concept that emphasizes integrating privacy considerations into all stages of the software development life cycle, SDLC. This means that privacy considerations are not added as an afterthought but are built into the design, development, testing, and deployment processes from the very beginning. Furthermore, privacy considerations should be communicated and understood at all levels of the project, from management to development teams. This collaborative approach ensures that privacy is prioritized, leading to the creation of systems and products that respect user privacy and comply with privacy regulations. Security architecture is a flexible concept with varying definitions tailored to each organization's specific requirements. It's designed to address the unique needs of different organizations, leading to diverse security architecture frameworks. Despite these differences, there are commonalities in the methods used by architects. These shared elements help ensure that security architecture effectively safeguards systems, data, and resources, while accommodating the distinct characteristics of each organization. The image illustrates a process flow that outlines the key elements of developing a comprehensive security architecture aligned with enterprise goals. Left side, enterprise goals, starting on the left side of the slide, we have enterprise goals. This represents the overarching objectives and strategic aspirations of the organization. Establish objectives, up right arrow, from the enterprise goals, and upward right arrow signifies the first step. 
This step involves establishing clear and well-defined objectives for the security program and architecture strategy. It's about setting the direction and purpose for the security initiatives that will be developed. Determine approach, right down arrow, moving to the right side of the slide, a downward right arrow indicates the next stage. Here, the organization determines the approach it will take to achieve the established security objectives. This involves planning the specifics of the security architecture that will align with the strategy. Right side, security architecture plan, develop architecture, down left arrow, continuing downward on the right side, a downward left arrow represents the process of developing the security architecture. This step involves creating a detailed security solution architecture that encompasses various components and technologies to address the identified security needs. Review and revise, left up arrow, finally, moving upwards on the left side of the slide, an upward left arrow signifies the last step. This step emphasizes the importance of regularly reviewing and revising the security architecture to ensure it remains effective and aligned with changing enterprise goals and evolving threats. The image demonstrates that the development of a robust security architecture is a dynamic and iterative process that begins with establishing objectives based on enterprise goals. The approach is then determined to plan out the security architecture, followed by its development, continuous review, and refinement. The cycle reinforces the idea that security architecture is not static but rather an ongoing effort that must adapt to the organization's changing needs and the evolving threat landscape. By aligning security with enterprise goals and continuously improving the architecture, organizations can create a strong and effective security framework. The purpose of security architectures is consistent, safeguarding organizations from cyber threats. To achieve this, architects often immerse themselves in the business, learning its unique aspects. Conversations with leaders and employees help comprehend business goals, system requirements, customer needs, and other vital factors. Using this information, architects develop plans and guidance that align with business objectives and match the organization's cybersecurity risk tolerance. This personalized approach ensures that security measures are tailored to the specific needs and priorities of the organization. A security architecture framework is a set of consistent principles and guidelines that guide the implementation of security architecture across different levels of an organization. Similar to how property architects follow guidelines, security architects use frameworks. These frameworks offer structured approaches to address security concerns and challenges. Numerous international framework standards exist, each tailored to solving specific security-related issues. These frameworks provide a structured and systematic way to design, deploy, and manage security measures, ensuring a comprehensive and effective security posture for the organization. Some companies create their own security architecture frameworks. For instance, at Dig8 ITAL, we integrate principles from three widely used frameworks, SABSA, TOGAF, and OSA by combining these standards, we offer a versatile service that benefits from the best practices of each. This approach enables us to create custom security solutions that are well-designed, effective, and tailored to meet specific requirements. It allows us to provide comprehensive security design, implementation, and assessment while leveraging the strengths of multiple established frameworks. Examples of common security architecture frameworks, TOGAF, the Open Group Architecture Framework is a widely used framework that aids in identifying the problems a business aims to solve through security architecture. It primarily focuses on the initial phases of security architecture, defining an organization's scope and objectives. TOGAF outlines the specific issues a business seeks to address using this process. However, it does not provide detailed guidance on the implementation of solutions to security challenges. SABSA, Sherwood Applied Business Security Architecture, is a policy-driven framework that focuses on key questions in security architecture, who, what, when, and why. It ensures that security services are seamlessly integrated into the organization's IT management. While known as a security architecture method, SABSA doesn't delve into technical implementation specifics. Instead, it emphasizes the alignment of security with business goals and operations. 
OSA, Open Security Architecture, is a framework centered around functionality and technical security controls. It provides a thorough understanding of crucial security issues, principles, components, and concepts that inform architectural decisions in creating effective security architectures. However, OSA is typically applied after the security architecture is designed, offering insights to enhance existing designs. It is particularly useful for fine-tuning the technical aspects of security architecture to ensure its effectiveness and alignment with security goals. Kindly take the time to thoroughly explore this comprehensive module, as it will undoubtedly contribute to a deeper and more comprehensive understanding of the subject matter.